What is Incubate Institute? Welcome to Tea at Taxevity, where you get insights from insiders, our many clients and friends. I'm Pramod Sharma, your actuary at Taxevity. I help people who care about sustainable financial independence harness the power of life and health insurance. Our guest is Rohit Mehta. Rohit, what do you do when you're not being interviewed? Well, Pramod, I work for the Credit Valley Conservation Foundation. So we're an organization that uh, fundraises for the Credit Valley Conservation Authority and each year we aim to raise a million dollars to support the environmental projects and programs of CVC that wouldn't otherwise be possible. Mm -hmm. And that's already a full-time job but you're also involved with something called Incubate Institute. What is that? All right. So Incubate Institute is a platform that supports up-and-coming projects uh, charitable projects, nonprofit projects, and we support them within their first three years of development. So we provide uh, assistance with capacity building, mentorship, and connection to our network. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about our network and, and some of the folks who make it up. Are there not other organizations that do this already? It's funny, in Mississauga and the surrounding area, not so much. So Toronto, New York, and other large cities tend to have incubators and organizations that focus on capacity building. However, in, in my experience as a funder um, out in the community, I've found that there is truly a gap. And that gap is that organizations that are starting lack the capacity support to help them get to the next level. Okay, and what do you mean by capacity support? Okay, so capacity would be your ability to do what it is that you're trying to do or what you're meant to do. Mm -hmm. So for instance, um, if you want to start a program in the community that involves knowledge of accounting and marketing and maybe branding, if you have the capacity to do that, you're going to be successful. But if you don't have the capacity, these missing pieces may prevent you from getting to your success. Okay, that makes, that, that makes good sense. What is your role with Incubate Institute? So I chair the board of directors. Um, it's been about eight months since we started and uh, I have a great team on my board and I'll tell you a little bit about uh, what each of them does. Um, so we have someone who's involved with the digital side. We have our vice chair who's involved in marketing. Uh, we have an entrepreneur. Uh, two of our board members are in accounting. Someone's in finance, um, fashion. Uh, we have a hip hop artist and someone in education. Okay, I've got to ask you why you have a hip-hop artist. Well, Ruben is uh, one of the stars of the group. He not only brings um, his talent from the performance side and, and hip-hop, but he's also a, a sounding board for groups who are at the grassroots and they are trying to start their initiatives. Um, he's been involved with a group called Ground Illusions for a number of years, um, and so he's just one of the uh, great board members that we have who bring expertise to the team. Is Incubate Institute your idea? Well, yes. Uh, when, when this organization was started, it came from a need that really has been on my mind for a number of years. When groups are initiating and they're taking their idea and they're beginning to turn it into action, where is that support that allows them to really get rolling and get moving? Where is um, the support that allows them to con connect to the right people? Where, where are the mentors? This is what's missing. Um, so, so what we do is we provide that support for free um, and it's all a network of volunteers. You know, I have the board who works alongside me and we have committees, we have advisors. Um, so, so while it may be my idea, it's really about the team. Hmm. If I've got a project I want to take to market, then what's the process of me getting help from you? Okay, so the first thing we ask organizations to do is to just submit their idea. We have a simple proposal form, um, and we currently have three projects that we've officially taken on uh, through that process. What we then do is we lead them through a mentorship process. So we have um, a multi-stage approach, very similar to what a consultant would do. Mm -hmm. um, we provide them with the expertise and the, the skill sets required so that they think everything through right from the planning stages and then when it comes into program planning and development they're ready um, and we assist with business planning 
uh, proposal development, strategic planning, budgeting, risk management, that sort of thing. It sounds like you've got things quite well thought out even though you're new in the process. Right. So I've been really lucky to be uh, involved on the other side uh, as a funder and having that type of experience has really opened my eyes to what creates a successful project, um, how organizations succeed right from the onset, um, and it's allowed me to understand really the difference between an organization that is on its way to success and organizations that don't quite make it. Um, so I, I try and take that expertise and, and, and really we're trying to put it out there to help groups uh, because we can. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you have several projects underway. Can you tell us a little more about them? Certainly. I'll talk about three projects. Uh, the first one is about beekeeping. And what's, what's interesting about what, this one... Like the flying bzzz kind of bees? Yes, bzzz bees. Okay. Right? And uh, what's neat about this project is that um, you have a veteran beekeeper who has spent a number of years producing honey and selling at our local market. And you have um, a young lady who has really spent uh, a whole year learning about um, beekeeping and, and the production of honey uh, at an apiary out west. And so they're coming together and they're forming a mentorship project that's all about not only educating uh, residents of Mississauga about um, beekeeping and, and the production of honey, um, but also helping future beekeepers who want to enter the profession um, become beekeepers. Um, and so it's an interesting and unique opportunity uh, and we're helping them establish a space um, and, and helping them with a little bit of their business planning. Another project that we're supporting is um, a, a woman who is working on a mentorship program for individuals who've gone through uh, domestic abuse. Um, she's really trying to assist them with helping not make the same mistakes that she went through. Um, she's somebody who uh, was in this situation for a number of years after she left the abuser uh, she realized that there weren't a lot of supports within the greater community and so she's now trying to give back by sharing her knowledge and helping connect other individuals to do so through a mentorship program so we're helping them with the development of the program and making sure that they're not duplicating any existing services in the community oh that's a good point mm -hmm. right so another project that we're working on is called lab b this is a Brampton-based co-working space. Are you familiar with the concept? Well, why don't you tell us about it? So a co-working space is essentially where a number of different entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, and business owners come together and they save costs by sharing space. So they may share printers, they may share uh, the heating and utility and, and um, water bills. Um, essentially, it's a much cheaper way to operate as a business, and it's very non-traditional. So whereas you'd be working nine to five in a traditional office space, um, a co-working space is, is essentially you come in when you need to work, you co-create with the individuals who are around you, and at the end of the day, you're probably able to accomplish more on a shorter budget, um, and this really helps individuals uh, and groups, companies take off. And so we're helping them with their revenue generation and their business model. So these are just some examples of what we're working on and over the next little while we hope to keep taking on projects within our capacity. We're just going to go little by little mm -hmm. and we, we certainly are always looking for more expertise to help us in doing so. Are you a nonprofit? So we're currently undergoing the process of becoming a registered nonprofit. One of the benefits is that we become a hub. And so by being a hub, um, we're going to be able to take on some of the administrative requirements and allow the projects to just do what they need to do without having to worry about the administration so much. Mm, yeah, that's very valuable, connecting different resources together. Right. How can people get involved? So one of the best ways to get involved with our organization is to become a mentor or a coach. We currently have a mentorship and coaching program and what we're doing is we're asking folks from the community who have different skills, who want to contribute their skills to uh, some of the projects that we're supporting. We're asking them to put their names forward, um, put the names of colleagues forward as well, and we want to meet with them and, and really understand what type of skills they bring to the table. We're then going to be able to take this group of individuals and as a team assist the different projects in achieving the goals that they want to achieve. What's your main message for the people watching today? So my main message has to be that help can be available to more groups with your help. So we need you to reach out to your friends, your neighbors, your cousins, everybody, and get folks 
to come together and to become mentors and coaches for Incubate Institute. Our website is www.incubateinstitute.org and when you go on incubateinstitute.org you'll see some of the profiles of different folks who are involved with us, some of the projects that we're currently supporting and opportunities for you to be a part of that. Thanks very much for dropping by. Thank you.